Gentleman, gentleman yields back. The gentlelady from the District of Columbia is recognized. Thank you, um, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Horowitz, uh, if there's a bottom line to your report, it appears to be that while there were mistakes made, mistakes that uh, have been discussed, that the um, that the uh, Clinton email that the investigation itself was not politically um, motivated. Uh, is that a fair rendition? I think what I would say about the final decision by the prosecutors is that we found their decision was not based on political bias, but on their assessment of the facts, the law, and the precedent. Um, now, and that, that, of course, in spite of what has been made uh, at this hearing by some of my colleagues about uh, Mr. Strzok's testimony. It, you know, if one hears that testimony, uh, it, it could sound like a textbook example of bias. So could you explain why, notwithstanding uh, the renditions we've heard of his uh, virtual on the record, because it's been quoted, uh, bias, nevertheless, the investigation itself was not biased, given the leading role he played in the investigation. What we found was, with regard to the specific decisions we looked at pre-July 5, that um, there were other team members involved. In some of those, uh, he and Ms. Page took a more aggressive view than the prosecutors. In some of those instances, or many of those instances, actually, it was the prosecutors who were making the decision, not the agents. And so when we looked at the notes, the emails, the other evidence we could find, and the testimony we got, um, we concluded that there wasn't evidence of bias um, in how those decisions were actually made or carried out, the specific ones we looked at. Notwithstanding Strzok's involvement, there, there were a sufficient number of other investigators so that the bottom line uh, here uh, of no political motivation stands as far as you're concerned? As to the specific decisions we looked at, correct. And as to the prosecutorial decision for the reasons I indicated. Now, there, there's a lot of concern about uh, Mr. Comey's speaking out. Uh, he used words like extremely careless, um, um, uh, and he has been criticized for after the, after the case was closed, speaking out again, yet your report said, and here I'm quoting, sir, the problem originated with Comey's elevation of maximal transparency. I tell you, uh, sir, if someone said, Eleanor, to me, you are being maximally transparent, especially as a member of Congress, I would take that as a compliment. So I, I need to understand your yeah. use of that word rather than uh, perhaps a more critical use of language. Right. Um, well, that was uh, Mr. Comey's explanation to us as to why he did it. I will say, as inspectors general, as you know, we no, stand I, I for was quoting the OIG report found right. the problem originated with Comey's elevation of maximal transparency as right. overriding uh, we, this case. Uh, uh, that is to say, overriding the principle that you got to stay silent. Correct. If you are the FBI. Correct. If look, I'm for, we are as IGs for government transparency in all ways possible, but there are places where there are other rules like classified material, like ongoing criminal investigations. For the reason we said, individuals' reputation should not be tarnished if they're not going to be charged with a crime. So and that's a rule. So he went it, beyond. It, it, his transparency is not what you're recommending Correct. to members of Congress. Correct. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.